everyone, it's Megan with Teach Me ABA and today we're knocking out some more task list items. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, go check out Brittany's wonderful video explaining an overview of the verbal operants and today I'm going to go a little more specifically in to the ABCs of each operant. So let's talk about man's first. Uh, the antecedent demands are motivating operations. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. Uh, that's B12 on the task list. Uh, and so you want to make sure that when you're teaching man's that somebody's motivated for something. They really want that thing. Um, a lot of people ask, what do you want? And that can really mess up your manned operands. So to keep that clean VB training, uh, just make sure that there's a motivating operation present. They ask for the item and that the consequence is them receiving that item that you gave them. A lot of people also praise with mans and my study that I published, Piles It All 2021, check it out in TABB, uh, we found that an individual who had a history of receiving praise for mans actually did not acquire mans when they were only reinforced with what they asked for. Um, so to make sure that you're getting the best results for your kiddos, make sure that that consequence is only what's asked for. So there are so many different types of mans. You can ask for mans with adverbs, adjectives, mans for information. Again, check out my publication. Uh, and also, Brittany and I have a CEU event that is available on Thinkific. So you can go to our website, pnaservices.com, and go to our continuing education link and get access to that, where we teach you how to teach all of the different types of mans, what antecedents you should set up, how to consecrate it, um, and if you like this video, share it with your friends, like, subscribe, and drop us a comment. Tax. Uh, Brittany did a great introduction to this, but to help you guys study, I just wanted to give some more details. Um, so, the antecedent to a tact is a nonverbal stimulus. If it was a verbal stimulus, that would be an intraverbal. So when you guys are going in and training tax, you want to make sure that you're not saying things like, what is this? What's that? Tell me what this is. We want to make sure that we're not providing vocal SDs when we're teaching tax because your clients won't learn to independently initiate social interactions. Uh, a lot of our clients, if we're not teaching tax in the pure form, they actually don't start initiating interactions with other people. They don't get any pure tax and they're always relying on somebody to say something to them first before speaking. Um, and if you met someone who did that, it'd probably be a little awkward, right? Uh, we need to be able to initiate. So let's make sure we're out there teaching clean tax. A lot of people just think of tax as labeling, but when you see somebody and you say hi to them before they say hi to you, that's a tax too. Antecedent is a nonverbal stimulus. The behavior is just whatever the person says and the consequence as with the rest of the verbal operands that are not man's is generalized conditioned social reinforcement. So that's important to know for the exam is that all the other operants are reinforced by social interactions. If you've got any questions about tax, go ahead and leave a comment below and we are happy to answer any questions that you have. Let's talk about the ABCs of echoics. The antecedent to an echoic is somebody saying something and the behavior is making those same noises back. So it can be just a goofy word, or it could be words that we want the individual to say. We consequate this with generalized conditioned social reinforcement. Teaching echoics is important because it's a building block on which we can teach the other verbal operands. Generally, we use echoic prompts to teach tax, intraverbal targets, even an echoic to man transfer. So it's really important to establish this repertoire when you're working with your kids. The antecedent of an intraverbal is somebody else's verbal behavior. It's different from a tact because those are nonverbal SDs. So for intraverbals, somebody says something and you say something back. That's your behavior, the B of our ABCs. It's consequated by that ongoing social interaction, which is also called generalized condition reinforcement. Intraverbals, when you're teaching them, they can go from very basic, like fill in the blanks, twinkle, twinkle, little star, uh, and you can move up to complex uh, social interactions. Uh, problem solving is really just intraverbal change that you're engaging in covertly. We could say in your head, but that's mentalistic, right? We're not gonna do that. 
Some more examples of intraverbals are answering questions. Uh, you ask somebody, what's your name? And they answer you. Their, their answer is that intraverbal. When somebody says, oh, I love your shoes, and you say thank you, your thank you is an intraverbal. So intraverbals are super important. We want to teach these cleanly uh, and not mess them up with other verbal operants. They're kind of more difficult to mess up, so go us. Intraverbals are what allows us to be part of our community. Uh, they allow us to function, they allow us to problem solve, they allow us to build relationships and help us make friends. So they're super important to develop this robust intraverbal repertoire. Cool, so hopefully you've been watching the rest of this series because it's time for a pop quiz. What is the consequence for every verbal operant besides a man? A the item that was asked for, B, tokens, C, generalized condition reinforcement, or D, all of the above? The answer is generalized conditioned social reinforcement. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful as part of our VB subseries of the BCBA Task List 5 study sessions. Like, subscribe, and share us with your friends. Thanks for watching.